Hi, everyone. We're very fortunate to be here with Hilda Paredes, who is joining us from London. She is incredibly in demand with ensembles and major festivals, and her work is played all over the world. Hilda, welcome to NMC. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to, to collaborate with you and, and be back after so many years. Even yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, so you are known for writing all kinds of music for large ensembles, small ensembles, but also orchestra pieces, uh, operas as well. So this is a little piccolo piece. Uh, how did you come to write Chatsizib, and uh, which is this this beautiful little solo piece? Uh, this piece I wrote it in ninety two, nineteen ninety two, and at the request of my good friend, the, the Mexican flute player Guillermo Portillo. At the time I was living, I was back in Mexico uh, for a few years and he was, he had a concert at the, in Spain, uh, in, in Sevilla, because there were lots of celebrations because it was the, the 500 years of um, uh, the arrival of um, uh, Cristobal Columbus uh, into Mexico. Uh, so there were lots of questions about whether there was something to celebrate. And uh, at the time um, I was, for, for, for many years already then, I, I was very much um, involved in uh, reading a lot about the stories of the Mayas, the, the sort of uh, popular and well-known stories. And it's, it's very interesting because the Maya uh, uh, in Yucatan, I mean, not necessarily just the Mayas, but they, they, they use uh, animals to explain the universe, to explain human behavior. And in the case of, of, of this piece, I found this little story um, which talks about this uh, red-chested bird, uh, the shaksitsib, and it, it, and this story is used to talk about the struggle between the shaksitsib and the ekbuk, who was a, a black bird, and these two birds were a, a symbol of what had happened in the old days when the Europeans arrived into Mexico and the struggle that took place between mm -hmm. and between the two, two cultures. And the red symbolizes the blood, that the blood of the Mayas. And the story ends saying that that and, and in the end the Shaksitsi wins and, and, and the egg book goes away and it's like a story of hope that one day this disgraceful age will come to an end. Of, of course, thank you for that. Uh, and is this represented somehow in the music with act, with musical features or is it more of an inspiration? It's just an inspiration and in the fact that, well, the piccolo is associated with birds and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you definitely hear the, the bird quality. No, it's it's very beautiful. Um, I think the, beginning, the beginning has a lot of the bird quality. Yes. Uh, the end, um, at the time I was exploring uh, and creating all sorts of, of rhythmic cycles, which I got the basics, the structure. I was very much intrigued and had done a lot of research into the uh, rhythmic cycles of the music of Northern India, particularly that of the dance music. So it's a transformation of a uh, Larry, which is a uh, uh, sort of um, very uh, virtuoso rhythmic pattern uh, that the dancers and the percussionists play in, in the tradition of Northern India. Oh, interesting, great. Thanks. And, and your work seems to often be inspired by um, extra musical ideas and places often in Mexico, but other places like you mentioned India and other places you've encountered. Um, now this, this is a strange question because it's, it's weird to generalize because every composer is different. Uh, but is there a sound of Mexico in contemporary music? I mean, when we talk about Canada, very generally, we could say we think about um, musicians spread out a long time, like over, over the stage or 
uh, wilderness or the sound of our amazing indigenous composers. Is there a general, is there anything in Mexican contemporary music you could point to? Uh, I think uh, the times of the nationalistic times uh, uh, is over. However, I think there are some composers that have picked up on that tradition. But I think the, the, the most exciting thing of Mexico, of uh, the Mexico of today, the 21st century, is the diversity of languages, the diver diversity of expressions. And in that sense, it's quite universal, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, great. You, you, you can find lots of uh, uh, very uh, experimental composers. You can find some more traditional ones. Uh, and uh, and within that range, this very very wide. <laughs> right, it's it's amazing. Much, diverse. Right. It's, hard to, it's hard to generalize because there's no true one contemporary music because everybody's doing such different wonderful things. Yeah. <laughs> so and and you, you yourself are amazingly prolific. You write tons of like so much music is great. Like how how what's your process in writing these these pieces do you do you sit at a desk do you uh work at the piano how do you usually go about writing your music uh no i don't work at the piano anymore no i am um, i uh well i i kind of explore uh a lot the harmonic possibilities i want to create for every piece of course there's certain sounds that I kind of prefer, so the kind of combination of intervals and, and, and from that on, uh, I, think, I think very much melodically. I think my, my thinking stems from, from melodies, uh, often they're quite chromatic melodies, and then, and then I find all sorts of possible relations I can establish within those sounds, both horizontally, horizontally and, and vertically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another thing that has been a constant in my music, as I mentioned before, is, is the structure. So uh, this is something I plan, I try to plan quite, quite well. Sometimes what I plan when I start a piece, sometimes change, it, it inevitably changes. Mm -hmm. uh, but each section is very, very carefully thought out. Uh, within each piece, uh, what structure and the direction of the, of of the music, where the music is going. Um, I also, um, because I have worked also with in the electronic music studio, this has changed my my imagination quite a lot. And uh, uh, for this reason, often when I go back to acoustic instruments, I um, sometimes need to find ways to to create to play to, for the players to be able to produce the kind of sounds that I want to incorporate in, in, a, in a piece of music. So often I explore a lot of uh, extended techniques or, or other techniques that are not necessarily the most traditional, classical 19th century, early 20th century ones. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think more or less those, so that's my musical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, as what you were saying, other extra musical inspirations, but I think, I, um, yes, maybe there are, there is inspiration in, in extra musical things, but not necessarily because once I sit down to, to, to portray whichever idea it is, I need to get to grips with what the music is giving me, sure. with what the music is proposing to me. So also, if I don't have a text to set, it's also different, and um, yeah. Right. So, and and Chaz, is this um, before you were interested in electronic music? I mean, is is this piece that we're going to listen to? Is that informed by electronic music at all, or was that before that? No, this is this is an old piece. Sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, and finally, a uh, bit of a strange question that we often like to ask our guests is, is there any piece of music in any tradition that you know about that you don't think that the wider public knows enough about uh, that is underappreciated? Yes. Well, uh, 
Yes, uh, you made me think about that. I, I had to really think carefully. And I think I may like to mention a piece that I think is a complete masterpiece and is not known as much as it should be known. And that's uh, Ruth Crawford uh, String Quartet. Thank you for that. Ruth Crawford's String Quartet or Ruth Crawford Seeger's String Quartet. Uh, let's all go to the Google, to the YouTube, to listen to that. I need to listen to that again. Uh, thank you, Hilda, for talking to us today and for your music. And we'd love to have you come to Toronto to work with our musicians and so our audiences can meet you as soon as the situation will allow. Wouldn't it be nice? I'm just so much looking forward to seeing people in the real, yes, and listen to live music. That's, that's nothing like it. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Hilda. Thank you.